Hello and welcome back to some more Spongebob Squarepants Battle for Bikini Bottom, where last time we began our adventures in the Kelp Forest and cleared out the Kelp, the main forest itself, as well as the Kelp Swamp, and today we're going to be heading into the Kelp Caves and concluding our adventures in this level. Hello there, Barnacle Boy! Uh, <laughs> uh, hi. Um, I need, uh, Spongebob's help if you see him. Okie dokie! He actually needs both Spongebob and Patrick's help, because this level, or this specific part of the level, more than anything else in the entire game, requires a lot of teamwork. You need to use both Spongebob and Patrick, constantly switching between the two, to make sure you get through this level in one piece. Don't worry, like I said, I'll walk you through every step of the way so you get through it in one piece, because this... This is a puzzle level. This part of the Kelp Forest is very puzzle-oriented as to how you actually get through it. It can be pretty complicated, but don't worry, I'm here to walk you through every step of the way, and, and I'll make sure you get through it in one piece. Hey kid, I could really use your help if you had some time to spare. Sure, Barnacle Boy, what do you need? I'm trying to recover my lost energy crystals and power my new secret superhero power. It seems the robots have found my supply and have hidden them in this cave. Secret superhero power? Oh, what to do, what to do, what to do? If I told you, it wouldn't be a secret, would it? Just trust me, it's worth finding these crystals. I'd go search it myself, but my bunions are acting up today. Well, then you rest those super bones of yours. I'll get searching for these crystals. All right, so it starts off pretty simple. Just stand on the button and then use the cruise bubble to open the gate. Nothing too... Oh, did it not? Okay, I guess I wasn't standing on the button. Nothing too complicated to start off with. Uh, but once you do this, you're going to want to backtrack and switch to Patrick, because we're going to need him in a second. And you may have seen this up ahead, but this is a power crystal. These pink shiny objects, these are going to be what we call power crystals. So we've got one of the six. There's only five more to go, uh, which is, you know, we haven't made a lot of progress yet, but we will soon. Now pick up this Tiki and throw it onto the button over there, then backtrack all the way to the beginning of the area and switch to SpongeBob, and then you can walk back. Uh, I'll, I'll be cutting out these little, uh, these, these bits where, where, where I'm just backtracking to switch to characters because there's not really much interesting things that are happening while I'm switching characters. Just make your way back to that area we were in before. Then once you get here, you can bounce up the leaves, uh, the, the tower of leaves that were spawned out as a result of throwing the Tiki. Then uh, jump up to this ledge back here where you can find your second power crystal and land on this button and get your cruise bubble ready. And get ready to put it to the test, because you need to aim all the way down there to basically retrace those steps to this level. And hit the button that's all the way up here. And then once you hit that, it'll drop down the gate and allow us to proceed further with the rest of the level. But we, before we do that, we're going to go ahead and switch back to Patrick. So let me go ahead and switch back to Patrick at the bus stop real quick. And then we can keep moving along our merry little way. There is a thing we're going to have to do with Spongebob in a minute, but we're going to uh, deal with... We're, we're going to do this with, We're going to deal with Patrick's stuff first, so... First things first, you want to drop down here, pick up the slender, or pick up the stone tiki, and throw it at the sleepy time robot to take him out nice and easy. Then you want to re-pick up the, the stone tiki because it, it won't be destroyed upon upon hitting the robot. Then throw it back up here, and you can throw the, the the stone tiki onto this button right here, which will cause a tower of leaves to activate like so, and allow us to grab our third power crystal of the levels. Let's go ahead and grab that like so. And then we're going to go ahead and backtrack once again to switch for, uh, to, sw to switch to SpongeBob. But before we do that, you want to pick up the, the Stone Tiki and then throw it back in that area. You'll see why in a second. Once you're here, you can stand on this button and then go ahead and use uh, SpongeBob to activate his cruise bubble. And go ahead and take out or, or hit that button. Which will then allow us to proceed into the rest of the Kelp Caves. And the next area is going to be with the main section where all the, all the major stuff happens. So, uh, before you switch back to Patrick though... What you want to do is you want to head into the section and then find uh, the monsoon robot and immediately cruise bubble him. Get him the hell out of here. He will be such a major pain in the ass if you don't take him out right now. So just take him out now with the cruise bubble so you don't have to worry about him again. Also take out these biz bots while you're here. Just take him out now. This is clear all the robots. There's not many, just those two robots and then the one monsoon to clear them out. Then you want to jump up this series of steps right here. And stand on this button. Oh, there's also a buzz bot up here. Okay, I forgot about this guy. Stand on this button, turn around, and get your cruise ball ready because we're also going to want to hit that button up there. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, most of the section has to be done with Patrick, but we're, we're going to do this all, all this stuff as SpongeBob first to get it all out of the way. Um, and you may think I shouldn't have hit that button there, but, th but the reason I did it is because I, I manually detonated it. Like, I, I fired it, and then I pressed the L button again to manually cancel it. And then, of course, the, the blast radius of that it was, able to, was able to hit the button. Anyway, that opened up the doorway to the final part of the Kelp Caves, and in here, we are going to find uh, not only the exit uh, to the level, but unfortunately we can't access the exit just yet, we gotta do some more puzzle solving first. We're gonna jump up here, and then we're going to find our final camper of the level, allowing us to retreat, or to go return to Mrs. Puff and collect our reward once we escape the Kelp Caves, which is, you know, the primary objective here. 
So now it's everything cleared up with SpongeBob. The goal with SpongeBob was to just uh, open up the rest of the kelp caves and clear out all the enemies. Because uh, unless you're, if Patrick can't really do a whole lot to, to clear out the monsoons, so you want to clear out the monsoon of SpongeBob. And now we can focus on the rest of this level. Uh, well, almost, almost. There's still one more thing we have to do with SpongeBob at the very end. But for most of this, rest of the kelp caves can be done with Patrick. So we're gonna drop down here, activate the teleport box, grab this sock, and then drop off the ledge to switch back to Patrick. And then we can go ahead and actually not take the teleport box to retrace our steps, because we need to uh, get the stone tiki that we found over here. You remember the stone tiki in this section? We need to reset it by slamming on this button to reset the stone tiki into the position that we want it to be in. Like this. Then pick it up and carry it back to that main area uh, uh, of the cupcakes that I mentioned just a second ago. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, skip this, uh, sk skip ahead in the footage a little bit. And once you get in here, you want to throw the tiki to the left. And the goal is to land the tiki on this button over here. So let's go ahead and land it right up there. Next, we're going to return to the hall over here. You, rem you may remember us finding a... Uh, a stone tiki right on this this part right here so we're gonna go ahead and pick up this stone tiki and then throw it up on top of this ledge then pick it up again and bounce away up the leaves and you're gonna start to see how this could have been a major pain in the rear end if we didn't clear out monsoon early because he could have zapped us off the leaves at any moment here wait till you get to the edge of the leaf and then bounce away up to the top now this is important don't launch yourself over the teeter-totter simply walk to the edge of the teeter-totter as far as you can then throw the tiki onto the ledge you can't see it, but there is a button over there you, that you need to throw a, a stone tiki on. So just take my advice, throw it over there, and then we'll deal with it later. Then from here, all you have to do is just drop down off this point to enter the final section of the kelp caves right up here, where you will find your third and final stone tiki that you need to solve this puzzle. Let's go ahead and pick this up and return back to that little section we were at before where we got on board the leaves. And before we bring this tiki up to where the teeter-totter is, we actually want to throw it up here on, on the ledge and essentially uh, walk this... Uh, 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 walk the, the, the stone tiki up and keep throwing it up the ledge step by step until you make it up to the top where we are going to uh, throw it onto this button right here and then bounce up the tower of leaves that it creates as a result to collect another power crystal and a purple shiny object. The purple shiny object is going to be waiting for you uh, up in this direction so you can grab it then turn around and grab the power crystal and a blue shiny object. Now there's only two more crystals to collect. We can also re-pick up this stone tiki like so, and we can bring it up to where the other tiki up top is waiting for us, because basically, if you haven't figured it out yet, we need to use one tiki uh, th and throw it across the gap preemptively so that we can hit the button when we get across, one tiki to hold the leaves in place, and another tiki to actually launch ourselves over to the first tiki we threw to actually solve the puzzle. So we're almost there, it's a little bit further to go, and then we'll be clear of the kelp caves. Uh, that was close, I, I was sure I was going to make that jump. But throw it here, launch yourself across, grab your power crystal, pick up the tiki, and throw it on here to raise another tower of leaves. We're almost out of the kelp caves now, just a little bit further to go, and then we're home free. So now the rest of this can be done with SpongeBob. So you want what you want to do is backtrack to the beginning of the area once again and switch to SpongeBob along the way. So we'll go ahead and drop off here at the bus stop, like so. And now we have one more power crystal and and subsequently one more cruise bubble gauntlet or cruise bubble challenge, I guess is the better term to use to complete then we will be able to access the end of, uh, or to uh, be able to uh, to collect our reward from, from Barnacle Boy and exit the kelp caves all in one fell swoop. So just a little bit further to go, and then we're almost out of this place. So simply bounce your way up this Tower of Leaves, bounce over here first to grab your Power Crystal, and then you want to double jump and then spin stall your way back to bounce your way up here, and then land on this button and position yourself in this general angle so that you can use the cruise bubble and try to hit that button like so. Again, this is just a, this is just a test of your aiming ability. There's not really any tips I can give here other than to just follow the path that I take. And from there, it's a matter of just your skills with the cruise bubble aiming to hit the button to open the way out of the kelp caves. But before you leave, you want to return back to the beginning of the kelp caves and go collect your reward from Barnacle Boy. And the fastest place, or the fastest way to do that is to simply walk your way back up these steps and then drop off to where you'll find Barnacle Boy waiting for you just over here. Barnacle Boy, I think I found all your crystals. Now I can see your secret superpower. All right, stand back. <laughs> oh boy. <sighs> there. What happened? I gained the power to trim my nose hairs at super speed. Incredible. Uh -huh, yeah, 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 I guess so. Uh, well then, uh, I need to return to the Mermelair. 
and get back to work. <laughs> but uh, here, take this golden spatula and go away. Of course, Barnacle Boy. I'm always happy to lend my services to my favorite superhero. If you ever run into trouble again, let me know. Yeah, sure, kid. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and goodbye. And with that, we have cleared the kelp caves. I know that seemed really easy just because of the- but that's because I was walking you through the whole way. I, I took you through the beginning. Almost everything we did throughout this this place was all iterative in a step-by-step -step process to make sure we can make this as, as, as seamless and easy as possible. So that you would- it wouldn't even feel like you were solving anything because all the pieces just perfectly fell into place. But if you don't know how to get through this place, it can be really tough. The kelp caves is a pretty tough puzzle to solve the first time you play through it. But thankfully, uh, that, that's why I have this walkthrough here to help you along the way and help you solving it to get to the end and then we can drop off here grab a golden spatula and now we can exit the kelp caves and believe it or not we're not done with this kelp force just yet we still have one more challenge to get through and it may just be the hardest thing in the entire game so let's brace yourselves Hi, Mermaid Man. What are you doing here? Oh, hello, Kyle. I was trying to find some of our missing energy crystals when I came across this vine. In my younger days, I held the all-time speed record for vine sliding. You should try it. What a hoot. And if you can beat my best time, I'll give you another of these gold spatulas. So, we're actually not going to accept the time challenge, because these are the kelp vines. Undoubtedly the hardest slide in the entire game, and possibly the hardest challenge in the entire game, bar none. Um, and we are going to beat the time challenge, but we're going to do this in two runs. We're going to do a partial run about halfway down the slide, when we're going to get a sock, and then we're going to do a secondary run where we actually do the time challenge, because it's the, the path is going to split at some point into two paths. The right path, which is the fastest way to, to do it, and the, the left path, which is the slower route, but it'll actually allow you to get the sock. And the reason we're doing it in two, uh, two runs, as I'm sure you could have guessed, is because this slide is hard, and we don't want to take any chances. We want to take the most optimal path to the to the bottom as possible, so that we uh, we, we, we don't have to risk uh, having to do this again. So, I recommend just doing your first run through to kind of get a feel for the slide, uh, uh, to, uh, and also get the sock, and then warping back up to the top afterwards, and then actually doing this as mermaid, uh, uh, for the mermaid challenge. But you'll notice the number one tip I'm using here is to just turn with the camera. Absolutely, it is absolutely necessary here, is to turn with the camera, because you will not have enough, you don't have enough, uh, turning speed to be able to make the turns by default just by just using the left analog stick. You need to turn with the camera as well. Here, Double jump up to this leaf to make your way onto the left path. Again, turn with the camera. Da -da -da -da. Okay, I, I failed to jump. That's fine because the checkpoint is right before this uh, this fork in the road, so that's totally fine. Again, it, it, it's pivotal here. Even when you're turning with the camera, it's still possible to make the mistakes, but you absolutely have to turn with the camera here because you will not have enough turn speed to make these jumps or make these turns if you don't. Double jump up here onto this leaf. Find your way up here to grab yourself a purple shiny object and then follow the path along to grab yourself a sock. Now, if you want to, you can go down the rest of the slide to kind of get a feel for it, get a feel for the turns, uh, and try to practice turning with the camera to make sure you can actually make sure, like, that this th that sharp turn right there, if I didn't turn with the camera, never would have made it. Absolutely never would have made it if I didn't turn with the camera. It is the number one most essential tip, uh, most essential piece of advice I have for getting to the bottom of the slide is to turn with the camera. Don't know what happened there, but I saved it anyway. Um, so yeah, you can, you can go down the slide uh, a second, to, or, or your first time, just kind of doing it normally if you want to, to get a feel for it, and just kind of understand how this works. Uh, and, and again, practicing turning with the camera. Absolutely, number one tip, practice turning with the camera. It is going to be your bestest of friends uh, in terms of getting to the bottom of the slide. And even then, you don't have to jump like I just did there to save yourself. Uh, but no matter what, that, that's one run through completed. And again, seemed easy, but when you're actually controlling it, those turns are really tight and they're really hard to make if you don't, if, if you're not uh, well, well versed in turning with the camera and just having good speed management and all that. So either way, when you feel comfortable and you're ready to take, your, take, on, uh, take on the challenge, you warp back to the top and uh, go to talk to Merman to get your time challenge. And again, like uh, you, you, you may be thinking, oh, why did you do it there? If you didn't fall off at the uh, at the fork in the road, you could have done that first try. And you're right, I could have, but I might not have made it to the end of first try because the time challenge for this 
On top of the fact that the slide itself is really hard and you have really tight turns to make, the time itself is not very lenient. You don't have a lot of room for error on the kelp on the kelp vine slide, so you kind of have to you, you have to just take the most optimal path possible. And going out of your way to get that sock is not optimal on the slide. So it takes you completely out of the way, and the right path is a major shortcut that just skips you right down to the bottom a little bit faster. So I'm not a little bit, a lot faster. So it's absolutely pivotal that you do this in two runs you do one run you don't you don't have to do the slide twice if you don't want to you can just get the slot and then use the menu to warp back up to the top but you absolutely have to uh do one run where you get the sock and then reset and then do another run where you take the shortcut right here and then just jump down along to the to the a little bit later on the slide and then you have a straight shot to the end this saves a lot of time and makes it so that you can actually get to the end in time Another very important thing you want to remember is that you want to try to jump as little as possible uh, because obviously when you're in the air, your turn speed is drastically reduced. So if you jump uh, and then you have to readjust your turn angle to the, oh god, okay, shouldn't have survived that one, but all right, to, to, to save yourself. It's much easier to do that by just turning and all that instead of, because if you try to turn midair, you have less time to actually, not less time, but you your turn speed is reduced when you're in midair than it is compared to when you're regularly just moving around. So I, I recommend, like, obviously, if you have to, if you're going off the edge and you have to jump to save yourself, then obviously then you want to jump. But you don't want to just like willingly jump around all the slides just for fun, because that, that's 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 another thing. That's a that's a surefire way to get yourself thrown off the edge uh, if, if you try that on for size. Anyway, that's the kelp vine cleared. That's some time you've gotten. I guess you could say I had that course licked. I guess I owe you a reward. Take this golden. Thanks, Mermaid Man. It is undoubtedly the hardest sliding challenge in the entire game. But it's done now. We made it through. Th those are my tips and tricks for getting through the, the kelp vines in one piece. And once you make it through this, you will have made it through the most challenging slide challenge in the entire game. And you and trust me when I tell you there is another slide coming up after this uh, in a couple episodes, but it is nothing compared to in terms of raw difficulty. It pales in comparison to the kelp vines. So this if you made it through this, you are set to go for the rest of the game. Anyway, now that concludes our adventures in the Kelp Forest, uh, with the exception of one more thing. We have to go back to the campsite and retrieve our reward from Mrs. Puff for finding all the campers. So we'll go ahead, jump out here, hop down into the teleport box that you'll find right over here. It'll take you back to camp, and you can collect your reward. SpongeBob, there you are. Thanks to you, all the campers have safely returned. No problem, Mrs. Puff. Any self-respecting sponge would gladly help. And it was actually fun exploring the kelp forest. We appear to have broken out of the camera cinematography. Somehow. You're not so bad when you aren't behind a wheel, SpongeBob. Thanks again. Always glad to lend a hand, Mrs. Puff. I found this golden spatula the other day. Why don't you take it? You definitely earned it. Wow, Mrs. Puff. I'll cherish it always. So I'm not quite sure how I managed to break out of the camera cinematography there, uh, but, or I'm sorry, break out of the cinematic camera angles for the cutscenes, but, uh, I did somehow anyway. That will conclude our adventures in the Kelp Forest. We can say goodbye for now. This, I absolutely adore this level. It's just, it's a, it's a great ride from start to finish. Great pacing with, in terms of all the gameplay variety, how it steadily builds up and up and up, up to the Kelp Vine, to the great climax of that giant, the epic slide down to the finish line. The atmosphere is impeccable. The music is all so good. Oh, I love the kelp forest, but sadly all good things must come to an end, and now we have to say goodbye and return to Bikini Bottom to close out the episode, but not before returning to Patrick to go ahead and trade in 10 socks for our for a golden spatula. And believe it or not, this is actually the second to last golden spatula we're going to be able to get from Patrick. We only have two more to get. It's going to be this one, and then three more episodes from now we will get uh we'll get another one. And yes, I said three more. Or sorry, another. Yeah, yes, I said three more episodes because. Believe it or not, we, like I said, we, we need eight, we need eight more socks, and the next area that we're going to be visiting only has, uh, three socks, and then after that, it, uh, this one has five socks, so we need both levels combined, we need to clear both these out 100% before we can come back here to visit, uh, Patrick for one last sock, so yeah, after this episode, we're going to have three more to go, or three more episodes to go, and then we'll come back to exchange the, the final ten socks for one final spatula, but for now, let's just go get one right now. Wow, Spongebob, you found some! Now they're back home, safe where they belong. Here's your golden back scratcher. Spatula. I don't speak Italian. <laughs> and that'll be it for now. So thanks for watching. See you for next time to catch you all later today for some more SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. Goodbye. <laughs>